Hello everyone, welcome to Math 484, Linear Programming. We now start Chapter 2, and this is the first video. The video starts with a simplest diet problem. This is the example we had in the video in Chapter 1, and we now simplify it further. So, the simplification we will make is that we will now only eat apples and bananas. If we only eat apples and bananas, then the table of the information that we need would contain only two rows with apples and bananas. We would not consider the other food groups. So I presented this here. This is the same one as the previous example, um, where I cut out the three rows of the three other food. So now we only eat apples and bananas, but we know that the minimum daily intake of the three types of nutrients must still be satisfied. So these numbers, 70 for protein, 50 for vitamin C, and 12 for iron, they are not changed. Since we have only apples and bananas, now we need only two variables. We call them A and B, where A is for apple and B for banana. So for the cost function, defined similarly as before, now is a function of two variables, A and B, and uh, we only have two terms. Eight, that's the eight cents per unit of apple, so it's 8A plus 10B for bananas. We now collect the constraints. So the total number of constraints remain the same because we have to make sure the minimum of these three groups of nutrients must be satisfied. And what is simplified is the left-hand side of this inequality now contain only two terms. So for protein, we'll have only 0 0.4 times apple and 1.2 times banana. I add them up and it must meet the minimum requirement, which is 70. And the same for vitamin C and for iron. So we have two terms on the left hand sides. And the final one that is the positivity, A and B must be non negative, is still holding. So we have four constraints and we label them C1, C2, C3, and C4. We see that now we have a problem to minimize this function here and the function depends on two variables a and b and we have these four constraints so we will learn a method that's called a graphic solution method to solve this problem since we have only two variables a and b now we can visualize the constraint in the plane, a two-dimensional plane with coordinates A and B. Let's look at the fourth constraint, that is, A and B must be all non-negative. So this will give us exactly the first quadrant. Now let's consider constraint C1. So C1, the constraint reads that 0.4a plus 1.2b is bigger than or equal to 70. So we aim at finding the boundary of this constraint, that is, where the equal sign holds. So this is an equation in the two-dimensional space AB. This becomes an equation for a straight line. The easiest way to find this line would be to find the intercepts. So you set A equals 0, and you find the B value, which will be 70 divided by 1.2, and that's the number. And the second intercept will be when B is 0, and the A value will be 70 
divided by 0 0.4 is 175. So one is on the A axis and the other is on the B axis. Okay, now we can graph this. So in the AB plane, we find the point P1, which is on the B axis, where A is 0. And we find the point P2, which is on the A axis, and B is 0. And then we connect P1 and P2, which is this deep blue color. It's a straight line. And we know this is the boundary of the region. And because of constraint C4, we are only discussing cases in the first quadrant. So the region that will give you the bigger than equal sign would be the region that's above this line in the first quadrant. So here we show it with a shaded light green color. So this is how you take care of constraint 1. Once we have understood what to do for constraint 1, for C2 and C3, the other two constraints, they are handled in a totally similar way. We will generate graphs in a similar manner. So for C2, we would look for the graph of this straight line by locating the intercepts, which is easily found. You can do this as an exercise. And uh, once the intercepts are found, and then we can graph it. Note that this number and this number here, they are all much smaller than the intercepts we had for condition C2. Therefore, these two points here, Q1 and Q2, are closer to the origin than the P1 and P2 for condition C1. Okay, So this red line is the line of this equation in the first quadrant. And the region above this line in the first quadrant with this lighter red color and is the area that the constraint with bigger than equal sign is holding. Now that we have done two of them, we shall be pros in drawing these um, regions. So for condition three, um, we do it in exactly the same way. We look at these with the equal sign and find the two intercepts. Then we identify the points of these two intercepts, R1 and R2, and connect them with a straight line, this dark blue. And the region above this line, this shaded blue area, is the region where this holds with a bigger than equal sign. There you go. We have all the three regions um, identified in the first quadrant. And now it's time to put all of them together. So here is the graph we have. In the first quadrant in the AB plane, I draw all the boundaries, the green line, the blue line, and the red line for the three constraints, C1, C2, and C3. And we know that all three constraints must be satisfied, which means we are looking for the region that's above all these three lines. Now, since the green line lies strictly above the other two, this essentially becomes the area that's above this green line in the first quadrant, as it's shaded here in gray. So this is the region that all the constraints are satisfied. And for the rest of the semester, we call this region the feasible region. Okay, so there's an introduction of this term. We define the region as feasible region where all the constraints are satisfied. Okay, 
Now that the feasible region is identified, the next step is to look at the cost function and try to find a point that's in this feasible region where the cost function becomes as small as possible. And this will be continued in the next video.